All right, let's talk about the reflection from the boundary of two media and the phase shift it introduces. And also we'll talk about Fresnel equations. So let's consider two media, a boundary between media 1 and 2. Here is refractive index N1 and 2. I have an incident beam reflected and transmitted. Angle of incidence is alpha and the angle of reflection is alpha, angle of refraction is beta. Let's assume that the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of incidence and it is pointed downwards. So this is the EI electric field. If we have electric field which is only perpendicular, transverse to the plane of incidence, we call it TE mode, transverse electric mode. The magnetic field can have any direction in the plane of incidence, but the electric field has only one component which is perpendicular to the plane of incidence. From the pointing vector, we know that this is E times H, or B, and pointing vector describes the direction of the energy flow, and we know that the pointing vector S is in this direction, so the B field is in this direction, so this is a BI. Here the direction of the electric field is conserved, so we have ER, and the B field in this direction, this is a BR. Here will be the electric field ET, and also the magnetic field B. We know that the parallel component of the electric field and also the parallel component of the B field are conserved in dielectrics. They are conserved across the boundary. So I can write that EI plus ER equals ET. Don't confuse this with the energy conservation law, because of course the energy of the incident beam must be equal to the sum of the energy of the reflected and transmitted beam. But here we talk about the electric field, not about the energy. So the, when it comes to the electric field, the sum of the electric fields on one side, in one medium, must be equal to the electric field in the other medium. So EI plus ER must be equal to ET at this point, at the boundary. Moreover, we know that the parallel component of the B field, of the magnetic field, is also conserved across the boundary. So I can calculate the parallel component, which is BI times, here is 90 degrees minus alpha, so here is also alpha. So if I take a cosine of Bi times Bi, this gives me the parallel component of the B field. And minus, because here the direction of the B field is in the opposite direction than the Bi, so this is Br times cosine alpha, and this must be equal to B T times cosine beta. We also know that B can be expressed as N over C times E. I can prove this for the plane wave. So I can write that I have EI times N1 in the first medium N1 over C times cosine alpha minus ER times N1 over C cosine alpha 
and this must be equal to e t times n two this time because this is in the second medium over c times cosine beta. We also know that e t is a sum of e i plus e r. So let's substitute e t with e i plus e r. And let's multiply also by the speed of light c. So we have ei times n1 cosine alpha minus er n1 cosine alpha must be equal to ei times n2 cosine beta plus er n2 cosine beta. Let's simplify this. So we have ei times n1 cosine alpha minus n2 cosine beta and this must be equal to ER times N2 cosine beta and plus N1 cosine alpha. So let's write E R to E I, the ratio of the reflected to the incident electric field. So this will be N1 cosine alpha minus N2 cosine beta over N2 cosine beta plus N1 cosine, uh, sorry, alpha. And this is called a Fresnel equation. This is a Fresnel equation describing the reflection coefficient for TE modes. RTE. So this is the ratio of the electric field which is reflected to the electric field which falls at the boundary. Now let's assume that cosine beta is complex. When it is complex? It is complex when we are talking about total internal reflection. The angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, so cosine beta or sine beta are complex. So I will write that cosine beta is just i square root of sine squared beta minus 1. Where does it come from? Let's square this and you will see that this is cosine square beta which is equal to i squared is minus 1 and here we have sine squared beta minus 1. So this is cosine squared beta plus sine squared beta, which is equal to 1, which is Pythagorean identity. So let's substitute this expression on cosine beta into this equation. So RTE equals N1 cosine alpha minus i square root of sine squared beta minus 1 over n1 cosine alpha plus n2 sorry here's n2 uh, n2 times i sine square beta 
Okay. So now we see that we have some complex number in the numerator and complex number in the denominator. So I can write that this is some a minus i b over some a plus i b. Well, a and b are some parameters. So the amplitude of these two complex numbers is the same. This is, let's name it a. Because a squared plus b squared is the same. So we have the same amplitude e to the i minus i phi and here is a e to the i phi. So finally we have 1, the amplitude is 1, this is the amplitude, times e to the power of minus 2i phi. This is a very important conclusion that here we have the amplitude of 1 because it means that all the energy is reflected backwards to the first medium. So now let's calculate the phase shift phi, which actually is minus 2 times phi. So the total phase shift is minus 2 phi. And what is phi? Phi is just arc tangent of B over A. And here B is N2, the square root of sine squared beta minus 1, and A is just N1 cosine alpha. So this is arc tangent of N2 square root of sine squared beta minus 1 over N1 cosine alpha. Moreover, from the Snell's law, we know that sine alpha over sine beta equals n2 over n1. So we can express sine beta as n1 over n2 times sine alpha. So let's substitute sine squared beta with this expression. So phi equals arctangent of n2 square root of n1 squared n2 squared sine squared alpha minus 1 over n1 cosine alpha. So this is arctangent and here we will have just square root of n1 squared sine squared alpha minus 1 yeah, sorry minus uh, n2 squared sorry here is n2 squared over n1 cosine alpha. And the final result is that delta phi, the total phase shift, is minus 2 times phi. So this is minus 2 times arctangent of square root of n1 squared sine squared alpha minus n2 squared 
over n1 cosine alpha. Okay, so this is the total phase shift that the wave undergoes when it is reflected from the boundary. And this is for transverse electric modes, so when the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of incidence. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.